Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior and welcome to another Mortal Kombat 11 video. Now today I'm very happy to bring you all the history of Scorpion. Now for those of you who don't know, this was actually the first video on my channel. And seeing as it's horribly out of date, terribly mixed and edited, as well as it in fact missing a few sections, I most certainly wanted to remaster this one first, as well despite how terrible it is, it does have a very special place in my heart. And seeing as I'll be remastering and getting you all up to date with all of the Mortal Kombat characters before 11's release, I figured let's start with a character that helped me start my channel. So today I'll be talking about Scorpion aka Hanzo Hasashi. Also just a heads up before we get started, I'll be excluding his guest appearance in Injustice Gods Among Us because he was guest DLC in it and I will also not be including Mortal Kombat vs DC in this, as that game kind of lives in its own and separate different timeline that is in fact separate to the main continuity. Anyway without any further ado, let's get on with the video. Pre Mortal combat. The Scorpion wasn't always well Scorpion. His real name is in fact Hanzo Hisashi. He is of Japanese descent and a member of the fabled Shira Ryu clan, an assassin based organization that was said to have rivaled the Lin Kuei. Now Hanzo grew up within the clan and was an extremely proficient fighter. He was nicknamed Scorpion because of his talent with a kunai and chain. It was nothing short of legendary. Now, during Hanzo's later years in the Shira Ryu, he would fall in love with a woman and the two would settle down and in due time they did have a child, but old habits do die hard, as despite being a family man, Hanzo still did work as an assassin and was seen by his elders as the best fighter the clan had ever produced. So one day, the Shira Ryu would be approached by a man known as Quan Chi. The sorcerer was interested in obtaining the scroll known as the Map of Elements. Now Hanzo at the time was not at all interested in what this scroll was about and was more interested in just completing his mission, so he would take up the job. However, whilst in the Shaolin Temple, Scorpion for the first time ever came face to face with a member of the Lin Kuei clan, that being the first Sub-Zero, Bi Hard. Now the two would fight each other, but unfortunately only one victor would walk away from this, and it should be pretty obvious at this point that it was in fact Sub-Zero. Now not long after his demise, the Shira Ryu would quickly fall suit, as the clan would later be slain by the Lin Kuei, with apparently Sub-Zero leading the charge. I'm putting Sub-Zero in air quotes by the way. If you don't understand why, then you'll get the gist in just a bit. Now upon Hanzo's death, his soul would be sent to the Never Realm to be tortured. However, whilst he was there, Hanzo once again came face to face with Quan Chi and the necromancer gave him a choice. To rot in hell and suffer or to come back from this hell and claim revenge against Sub-Zero as he was the one responsible for putting him here and the one that was responsible for exterminating his clan. So he would take Quan Chi's offer and renounce his name Hanzo Hisashi and now take on his nickname Scorpion. Now, during during the later half of Mortal Kombat Mythology's Sub-Zero, Scorpion would once again come face to face with the Cryomancer, but much like their first battle, Hanzo would be defeated. Now despite this, Scorpion wasn't discouraged. If anything, this had motivated him, and he swore to himself that the next time the two came face to face, Bihan would not be so lucky. Mortal Kombat Now two years would have at least passed by during Hanzo's demise, and Hanzo would be one of the individuals that were selected to participate in the Mortal Kombat tournament in Outworld's favour. You see, initially Scorpion wouldn't exactly be too interested in participating, however when he learnt that Sub-Zero would be on the opposing side, he would take this opportunity to enter. Now just before the tournament began, he was in fact given an ultimatum by Quan Chi. The Necromancer told him that this was a make or break situation. He needed to kill Sub-Zero. If he failed in this quest, then his soul would be banished to oblivion and he would no longer be in Quan Chi's service. Now during the end of the Mortal Kombat tournament, Liu Kang was successful in defeating Goro and Shang Tsung, the island began to erupt and fall apart, and Scorpion was finally given the opportunity to come face to face with Sub-Zero once more, and the two would battle to the death, with Hanzo finally being successful in redeeming himself. Pleased and satisfied with accomplishing his goal, Scorpion would return back to the Neverrealm. Mortal Kombat 2 Now Scorpion's peace wouldn't exactly last for too long. As you see, a second Mortal Kombat tournament would be announced, and Scorpion was shocked to hear that Sub-Zero would be participating. The Hell Spectre was understandably extremely confused as he knew for sure that he had in fact killed him. Now just to make sure that he was right about what he was hearing, he would enter the second tournament in order to see if Sub-Zero was actually alive. Now Scorpion would stalk Sub-Zero for the entire tournament and upon seeing him spare one of his opponents, he noticed that this wasn't right and as the tournament progressed, Hanzo learnt that this was in fact the younger brother of the original Sub-Zero, Kwai Lang. 
Now, despite Kwai Lang's bitterness towards Scorpion, Hondo made a vow to himself to in fact protect the younger brother, as he felt like he had settled his personal problems with Bi Han. So initially, he didn't want any bad blood to be between him and Kwai Lang. Mortal Kombat 3. Now, during the events of the third game, Shao Kahn would begin a mass invasion across the realms, but he predominantly wanted to focus on Earth Realm, as the champion Liu Kang had defeated him in the previous tournament. Now, because of how chaotic these events were, Scorpion was given the opportunity to walk across the realms of his own will. Now, the Revenant came face to face with Shao Kahn, and the Conqueror would in fact enlist him in his forces. However, when he learned that he'd be going up against Sub Zero, he would in fact switch sides and turn against the Emperor. And once Shao Kahn was defeated, he would return back to the Never Realm once more. Mortal Kombat 4. Now, during the events of the fourth game, Hanzo would learn from Quan Chi that apparently his wife and child did survive the massacre of the Shira Ryu, but the second Sub Zero caught word of this, he would track them down and kill them. Upon hearing this, Scorpion exploded in a fit of rage. Angered and understandably disgusted that the new Sub Zero would do this, Scorpion would travel out and confront the younger brother and defeat him. Now, before Scorpion could actually kill him, Kwai Lang would in fact reveal to him that he had nothing to do with it and that he was completely unaware of the situation that was going on. At this point, Scorpion himself was also rather confused, that is, at least until Quan Chi appeared before him. You see, the Necromancer then revealed to him it was Quan Chi impersonating Bi Han during the massacre of the Shira Ryu, and it was also him that personally dealt with Hunter's family. So he had in fact been the mastermind the entire time of this blood feud. Now, upon hearing that his master had betrayed him, Scorpion would attack the sorcerer and drag him down to the Never Realm to make him pay. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. Now, many, many years would pass by, and Scorpion during this time would brutalize and torture Quan Chi for what he done. However, on this one occasion, the sorcerer was able to escape, and he felt his powers diminishing. So whilst on the run, he would strike a deal with two powerful Oni known as Dramin and Moloch. Enlisting them under his control, he would have the two fight Scorpion whilst he could escape from the Neverrealm. Now, Hanzo did chase him down, but ran into the two Oni and was ambushed by them. He did hold his own for a significant amount of time, but was overpowered. Instead of actually being killed, he was thrown into a Sornado, as they were known to rip apart any individuals that were caught in it to pieces. Mortal Kombat Deception. Now, this wouldn't spell the end for Scorpion. You see, whilst in the eye of the storm, Scorpion would in fact be saved by the Elder Gods. As you see, during this time, Raiden had been corrupted after his sacrifice, the Dragon King Onaga returned, and the Elder Gods at this point in time did not have a champion, someone that could represent them and enforce their will. They made Scorpion their own enforcer with the quest to track down the Dragon King Onaga and kill him. If he was successful in doing this, then the Elder Gods promised that in return for his service, they would resurrect the Shira Ryu. Now, during the events of Mortal Kombat Deception, Onaga is defeated. However, it is at Shichenko's hand. So, at least in one way, shape and form, Scorpion's quest is completed. However, there is much more to this. Mortal Kombat Armageddon. During the events of Mortal Kombat Deception to Armageddon, Scorpion no longer serves the Elder Gods. Because upon Onaga's apparent demise, the Elder Gods did somewhat keep their promise. They did resurrect the Shira Ryu. However, as a sign of their somewhat twisted nature, they brought back all members of the Shira Ryu, including Hanzo's wife and son, as a hell-spawned warrior. They were all more or less revenants, much like Hanzo. Disgusted by what the Elder Gods had done, Scorpion swore vengeance against them, and he knew he could get back at them by killing two individuals that were crucial to their plan, Taven and Dagon, the sons of Argus, and your prophesied children of death destiny that were meant to stop the end of days. So Scorpion would actively seek out the two in the hopes of killing them and foiling the Elder Gods' plans. Now Scorpion next appears during the battle at the Pyramid of Argus, where the forces of light and darkness are battling each other. However, as we all do know, during the final battle, all combatants are seemingly killed except Shao Kahn and Raiden. We actually get a little snippet at the beginning of MK9, where it is insinuated that Scorpion was killed by Sub-Zero. Now during the MK9 reboot, some things are slightly altered in terms of backgrounds, with Scorpion being one of these individuals. Now, although it's not directly said, it's insinuated that the events of mythology still did happen, but this time, instead of Scorpion's wife and child actually surviving, they are also killed off, which results in Scorpion dying once again and being put under the service of Quan Chi. During the early section of MK9, Scorpion is pretty hell-bent on coming face-to-face -face with Sub-Zero in order to redeem his family and clan. Now, since the Star 
style of storytelling has definitely changed in MK9, there are far more verbal exchanges between the two, with Sub-Zero even saying to Scorpion, to hell with your clan, despite not actually taking part in their massacre. Now during the first tournament, Scorpion is in fact approached by Raiden, who is well aware of his vengeance towards Sub-Zero and does actually ask him to spare his life. In exchange for doing so, Raiden says that he will consult the Elder Gods and see if they can do anything about the Shira Ryu. Now unfortunately this plan doesn't exactly go through, as when Scorpion battles Sub-Zero, Scorpion is the victor but is also hesitant in killing him, but it's until Quan Chi shows him visions of his clan's massacre and Sub-Zero killing his wife and his child. These visions are strong enough to tip him over the edge and he kills Bihan. Now he does make a small appearance during Liu Kang's chapter, where he assists Quan Chi in attempting to defeat him, but they are unsuccessful. Now he does resurface later on during the second Mortal Kombat tournament, where Kwai Lang has now taken on the mantle of Sub-Zero and is seeking out Scorpion to kill him. Now eventually Kwai Lang is successful in doing so, and when Hondo comes face to face with him, he is shocked to see another Sub-Zero, thinking that it's a joke. When he learns that it's the younger brother, he says that his brother had no honour, and the two fight, with Scorpion in fact losing this battle. Now before Kwai Lang can deal the finishing blow, he's attacked by the cybernetic Lin Kuei, allowing Scorpion to return back to the Neverrealm. Now Scorpion does appear once again during the climax of the game. After multiple of Earthrealm's heroes have been killed by Sindel, Raiden travels to the Neverrealm in hopes that he can strike a deal with Quan Chi. But before he meets the Necromancer, he comes face to face with Scorpion. Now Scorpion says that the god has no business here, and Raiden retorts back that he's nothing more than a attack dog and wasn't a strong enough person in order to revive his clan. Now understandably, this upset Scorpion, and the two battle with Raiden defeating him. Now during the events of MK9, Shao Kahn is defeated, but before they are fully able to rest, Quan Chi and Shinnok spring their surprise attack and begin attacking the realm, with Shinnok having his eyes set on corrupting the Jinsei, which is considered to be Earthrealm's life force. Now during this fight, Scorpion battles Johnny Cage alongside a Revenant Sub-Zero, but is ultimately unsuccessful in doing so. Now after Shinnok is also defeated by Johnny Cage, Quan Chi, Scorpion and the other Revenants return back to Quan Chi's fortress, but the special forces were anticipating this and infiltrate the facility. Now during the ensuing battle, Johnny Cage is stabbed and severely injured, and whilst Johnny was dying, Quan Chi would attempt to create a Revenant version of the movie star. Now fortunately for Johnny, Raiden would intervene and in fact prevent this from happening. Now what's rather interesting is that by Raiden actually preventing this, the explosion that came out of the flesh pit not only saved Johnny's life, but also transformed all of the revenants within the fortress back to their human forms. So Scorpion was finally freed of Quan Chi's control. Now the next few years for Hunzo were extremely difficult, as he was dealing with all of the guilt that he had felt from serving under Quan Chi. It made him borderline suicidal until he met up with a man known as Ken Shi. The blind swordsman helped rehabilitate Hanzo. He helped him come to terms with the pain that he had inflicted, and over the next few years wanting to start a new life, Hanzo would reform the Shira Ryu, creating it in his own image and setting up his own temple. And as a sign of gratitude towards Kenshi, he would save his life by killing Su Hao because he was being chased by the Red Dragons and take in his son Takeda and teach him the ways of the Shira Ryu. Now over the course of the next few years, he would teach Takeda and another boy that he'd taken in, Fox. But the peace would not at all last long, as one evening Fox had gone mad, killing all members of the Shira Ryu and leaving only Takeda and an unconscious Scorpion alive. Now when Hanzo realised that Fox was now possessed by some sort of demon, and the fact that his clan was killed once again, his outburst of rage inadvertently caused him to slip back into a Scorpion persona, and the two would fight. But the demon that was possessing Fox was strong enough to in fact overpower Scorpion, as Hanzo himself was still at conflict with his Scorpion persona. It's only until Takeda interfered and Fox was killed, to which Hanzo was saved. Now understandably, this raised a lot of questions for Hanzo, as the demon had mentioned some form of connection to a Kami Dogu dagger, a weapon that Hanzo was given by none other than the Thunder God Raiden. So the two would travel to the Sky Temple in order to meet him, but when they were getting close to their destination, they realised that he had also been corrupted by this so-called demon. It's only upon Raiden's defeat where they in fact learned that these people weren't being controlled by a demon, but they were being tainted by blood magic. You see, the Kami Dogu that Scorpion was given was in fact a ceremonial dagger that was used to split apart the one being, and each of these daggers had blood magic properties tied to them. Raiden had entrusted each dagger to a very strong fighter in the hopes that in their possession, they would keep them out of un 
trustworthy hands. However, during the MKX comic book series, these daggers are used rather frequently by their hoarders, as it does give them godlike power. Now, one of these daggers were in fact entrusted to Sub Zero, but he has mysteriously disappeared off the grid. With many believing that he'd been corrupted by the dagger, Scorpion was given the mission alongside Takeda to track him down and save him of the Kamidogu's corruption. Now, Hanzo once again came face to face with Kwai Lang, and much like they had expected, he was corrupted by the Kami Dogu. Now this leads to a very, very bloody and brutal fight between the two ninjas, and Hanzo is forced to transform into Scorpion in order to gain the upper hand. Now Hanzo nearly kills Kwai Lang until Takeda steps in and prevents him from doing so, and it's here where Scorpion returns back to his Hanzo Hasashi form. Now after defeating Sub-Zero, they would reclaim the dagger and continue to travel across the realms in order to claim more. Now the two actually meet Shijenko, and he introduces them to a Chaos Roma known as Havoc. Now Havoc is in fact the individual that has been using these blood daggers to manipulate everyone to his own will. So when he finds out about this, as expected he would explode into a fit of rage, succumbing to the Scorpion persona and kill Havoc. However, the Kyos Roma would not die so easily, as he does regenerate and continues the fight against Hanzo. Now upon realising that Takeda has been taken hostage, he snaps back into his Hanzo persona and is overpowered by Havoc. Now the Chaos Cleric does mock him and tries to persuade him into succumbing to the anger and Scorpion persona, as really that's what Havoc wants. He wants to have Scorpion as his servant, but Hanzo would not allow this and instead die in Takeda's arms. Understandably, much to Havoc's disappointment, now despite Hanzo's body physically dying, his spirit is sent into some very strange kind of limbo-esque hell, and it's here where he finally comes face to face with Scorpion, and the two do finally battle it out, as both personalities want control of this body, but Hanzo doesn't want to allow someone like Scorpion to define who he is as a being. Scorpion tries his best to make Hanzo succumb to his anger and the pain and despair that he had felt when his wife and his child were murdered, but Hanzo decides to use this as an anchor to keep himself going. So because of his strong will, Hanzo is able to overpower the Scorpion persona and return back to life, with fun fact, all of Scorpion's powers in his possession. Now during the time of his resurrection, we're actually at the climax of the MKX comic book series, where Havoc now wields the amulet of Shinnok and is attempting to kill Takeda whilst his blood god minions are fighting off outworlders. Now just as Havoc is about to kill Takeda, Scorpion intervenes and tears off Havoc's head. This in turn shocks Havoc as it never crossed his mind at any point that one, Hanzo would return back from the dead, and two, be able to use Scorpion's powers at his own will. Now, upon claiming revenge, Hanzo took the severed head of the Chaos Cleric and travelled to the Never Realm, throwing the head at the feet of Quan Chi. As you see, Hanzo was able to put two and two together. The only reason Havoc was able to use blood magic is because Quan Chi had given him the ability to do so. Havoc was the individual that was supposed to obtain Shinnok's amulet and bring it back to Quan Chi, but instead wanted to use it for his own personal goal. So upon throwing the head at the feet of Quan Chi, he would disappear as the Chaos Cleric was killed. Now it took him roughly about a week to escape hell, but when he returned back, he and Takeda would start up a new Shira Ryu together. Now not too long after the new clan was formed, Hanzo was able to reunite Takeda and Kenshi's broken relationship, as Takeda for many years felt like Scorpion was his father, as it was Kenshi that left him at his door. So after many many years of built up tension and frustration, the two were able to fix their relationship. And talking about broken relationships, Hanzo would be invited to the Lin Kuei Temple, where he came face to face with Kwai Lang and was understandably quite suspicious of this sudden invite. Now the true reason why he actually asked Hanzo to come here is because Kwai Lang had actually learned information about Hanzo's family. However, before he's able to tell him the details, Hanzo would be attacked by Kwai Lang's protege, Frost, as she didn't want an alliance between the Shira Ryu and the Lin Kuei. However, after the two are defeated, Kwai Lang takes takes Hanzo to the dead body of Sector and shows him that in Sector's data mines, that it was in fact Sector and Quan Chi working together that led to the massacre of the original Shirai Ryu. Now upon learning this information, his sights would quickly change to that of Quan Chi. Understandably wanting revenge, he would bind his time and wait for the opportunity to strike. Now this just so happened to be during the later half of MKX, where after Quan Chi is defeated and taken in by the special forces, Hanzo announces his presence and let 
lets the special forces know that this is personal Shirareyu business. Now Sonya understandably doesn't want him to do this, as there are still revenants under his control, so by Hanzo in fact killing him, it will negate them the opportunity of being freed of their corruption. But despite this, Hanzo could not deter from the path that he's now gone down, and understandably wants Quan Chi dead as soon as possible. So he's able to defeat all members of the special forces, and executes Quan Chi on the spot. However, this is not before he's able to release Shinnok with the assistance of Devora. And that is in fact the last canon appearance we have of Hanzo Hasashi in the Mortal Kombat canon. Nothing all was really said about Hanzo upon MKX's ending. If anything, it focused more so on Johnny Cage, Sonya Blade and Cassie Cage's relationship, as there was a broken family dynamic. So it's unknown what really happened with Scorpion as a character. However, with him being included in MK11, it will be extremely interesting to see what's going on with the character, especially with time travel being an integral part of the main story, and there being a strong emphasis that Scorpion is seemingly a revenant in this game, at least in all of the costumes we have in the current early build of the game. But this could vary and change, especially with different timelines being incorporated into the main story. So I'm genuinely interested to see what exactly is going on with the character. There's definitely been a change to Hanzo's character from the original timeline to the new timeline. But yes, that more or less does wrap it up for this video guys. I do hope you've enjoyed this remastering of my original History of Scorpion video. I've been wanting to do this for approximately 4 years now, and I do apologise for it coming out extremely late, but I really did want to do this remaster when we were approaching Mortal Kombat 11's release. Plus, I wanted to add so much more in this video compared to my original, seeing as there has been a 4 year gap, and I like to think in some ways I have improved. Anyway guys, I do hope you enjoyed this, and I do apologise for it coming out one day later than expected. This video turned out much longer than I had personally anticipated. But yes guys, that is in fact more or less it for this video. By the time this comes out, I'm happy to let you all know that I will be working on another history of video. And I mean, we've talked about Scorpion this week, so next let's talk about Sub-Zero, and that will be scheduled for next week, Saturday or Sunday. I will let you all know that these remastering videos will predominantly be focusing on characters making the Mortal Kombat 11 roster, but in also saying that, if there are any high demands for particular characters, especially down in the comments below, I will take them into account and make sure they get their own limelight. But yes, that is in fact it for this video guys. Now before we wrap up, if possible, let's try getting this video to about 500 likes. It's a great way of supporting this channel since YouTube's ad system is broken as hell, so by giving it a thumbs up, it helps out a ton. And also don't forget to tick that bell, as YouTube, once again, has a lot of problems with my videos not appearing in your sub boxes, so by doing so, it helps me out and most certainly helps you out. But that's it for this one guys. Now as always, please comment, like, subscribe and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care and I'll see you all next time.